In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this Nano VNA-F version 2 that Rsync sent me to review and share with you. Before we get started with the review, I just want to let you know that this video is not intended to take the place of any of the documentation that comes with this device. So if you're considering buying one or using one for the first time, make sure you check the link below and take a look at that documentation before you do. Here's a quick look at everything that comes with your Nano VNA. First is an information card, English is on the back. There's a QR code here that'll take you to the SysJoint website so that you can download the full manual and any firmware updates for this. Now, of course, you also get a USB cable so that you can connect this up to your computer or use this to charge it. This Nano VNA comes in a carrying case with all of its accessories, and those accessories include a stylus. We get two patch cables, and these are sort of semi-rigid patch cables. Over here, we have our calibration slugs, the open, the short, and the 50 ohm load. And then over here, we get some adapters. This is a female-to-female -female coupler, a male-to-male -male coupler, and then a right angle female to male. Now, of course, we get the two ports over here on the left. Port one or the S11 port is up here on top, and port two or the S21 port is on the bottom. On the right side of the Nano VNA, we have the navigation buttons here. We have the status LED here. We have a USB A port here. I guess you can actually use this to power another device if you need to, up to one amp. Over here is the on off switch. And over here is the USB-C charging port. And this is also the port that you would use to interface to a computer. And then on the back, we've got a silk screened block diagram to kind of help you remember how to use this thing. But really, I suggest going to the website and checking out the full manual. As mandated by the FCC's 2021 Barnes-Clark Act, I will now remove the screen protector from this electronic device on camera. Now let's turn the Nano VNA on and go through some of its features. I'm not going to cover everything in this video, but I will go through a few things that I would use as a ham radio operator. After the splash screen comes up, you can see we're right into measurement mode. If you're powering up your Nano VNA for the first time, you're going to see a whole lot more stuff on the screen. I've already been using this one a little bit, and I've sort of saved my configuration and turned off some of that stuff that I don't normally use. But having said that, let's take a quick look at what I've got on the screen right now so you can get a feel for the layout. Up here at the top left is the battery charge indicator. And then over here, you can see there's a yellow trace along the top. Right now, the Nano VNA is set to measure SWR. And then down here on this line, we've got some information about what frequency the marker is currently looking at along that SWR curve. Now we're going to take a look at that in more detail later. Over here on the right is sort of the scale. Up here at the top is 11 and down here at the bottom is 1. Along the bottom of the screen is sort of the frequency range we're currently spanning. And you can see we're at a start frequency of 3 megahertz and a stop frequency of 30 megahertz. But I should mention this Nano VNA is capable of scanning up to 3 gigahertz, so it's got pretty wide bandwidth. And then right here in red, this is telling us how many measurement points are currently being taken across the screen. And currently we're set to 201 points which I believe is the maximum for this unit. Now normally, down in the middle in yellow, we would see information about calibration, but this unit isn't currently calibrated. I reset the calibration a minute ago, so let's go through and recalibrate it so that we can start taking some measurements. Before we start the calibration, I do want to mention that there is a handy menu map on the website that you can download, and that'll help you kind of navigate the menu system on this Nano VNA. It can be a little confusing, the first few times that you go through it, and that menu map is a good reference. Before I do anything else, I'm gonna set the frequency span that the Nano VNA is going to measure. I'm gonna access the menu system by clicking over here in free space, and then I'm gonna to go to stimulus. I'm gonna set my start frequency to three megahertz, and then I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna set my stop frequency to 30 megahertz. Now that that's set, you can see the start frequency over here of 3 megahertz, 
and the stop frequency of 30. The next thing I'm going to want to do is calibrate the Nano VNA. Now to calibrate, we're going to click on Cal, and then we're going to click on Calibrate on the next level menu. Now you can see we've got four calibration steps to go through, open, short, load, and through. I'm going to start off and grab the open slug from the kit. And this is the one that sort of has just a depression in it. And I'm going to connect this up to port one. Now that that's connected up, I can just click open. You can see that it's performing the open calibration. When it's done, you'll see a check mark next to it to let you know that it's complete. In order to do the short calibration, we're going to remove the open slug from the port and I'm going to grab the short slug. The short slug is the one with the gold pin in the middle and sort of the gold base with no depression inside, and it's the same size as the open slug. So now we'll put this one on port one. Of course, we'll get this out of the way and then click the short button. And again, it does the short calibration and we see the check mark when it's done. In order to do the load calibration, I'm going to bring in the bigger slug. This one has sort of a silver connector and a gold body. And we're going to put that on port one. And of course, we'll now tap load. And that takes care of the load calibration. For most ham radio applications, like measuring SWR of an antenna, we don't really need to do the through calibration, but I'll do it here just for the sake of completeness. So I'm going to get the two patch cables connected together with the female coupler. And then I'm going to connect one end to port one, and then I'll connect the other end up to port two. And then we'll just click the through button. And calibration is done. We get the check mark. So now all of the items are calibrated and we can click done. Once I click done, you can see we now get a menu with seven save slots. And you can see slot zero has already been saved, but I'm going to overwrite it with this current calibration. Now, if you wanted to do different frequency ranges or save different calibrations, you can put them in any of these other slots. But like I said, I want to overwrite slot zero and keep this configuration. Now that we're all calibrated up, I can remove the patch cables and we can start doing some measurements. And one thing to keep in mind is when you're not using these ports, it's a good idea to keep the dust caps on them, obviously to keep dust out, but to also keep any stray static from getting into the ports. Now that we've got the calibration complete, you can see the letters down here at the bottom of the screen are lit up to let us know which calibration modes are set. So at this point, now that we're calibrated, we could start doing some measurements. And in this case, SWR measurements, because that's what I've got everything set to. But I want to back up a step and show you how I've configured the display. So I'm going to tap over here to get the menu activated, and I'm going to go into the display option. And then I'm going to go into the trace option. And you can see right now, only trace zero is active. Now if I want to enable trace one, I'm just going to click on that. And now you can see that trace one is now active and listed in blue. But you can probably also see that both of the traces are currently measuring SWR. This one is measuring it on port S11, and this one is measuring it on S21. And then over here from the menu, you can see that trace zero is checked, which means it's turned on, but trace one has the A next to it, meaning it's the active trace. But anyway, let's go back and let's change the format of trace two and set it up so that instead of displaying SWR, it will display the Smith chart. Now, you can see if I click back to get out of the menu, we've got the Smith chart displayed with the number one marker here, and then we're also still measuring SWR with the yellow trace. Now we can turn on up to four traces, as you've already seen, and we can configure each one however we want with the format setting. And then again, for example, I've got trace three on, and now that's showing log mag. But for now, I'm going to go back in and turn off these other two traces, and we'll take a look at just SWR for the moment. So I've brought in an SMA to SO239 adapter so I could connect up my fan dipole that's in the backyard. So you can see what we're looking at is a plot of the SWR over the span of frequencies between three megahertz and 30 megahertz. And you can see we've got some areas where there's real high SWR and we've got some areas where there's low SWR. Now right now it's kind of hard to see because the marker is hidden behind this S11 icon, but we're starting off at three megahertz and we're measuring an SWR of 14.9. 
Now I can move this marker along the trace to see where the frequency ranges are where SWR is best. So if I use the buttons to kind of move the marker here, it's a little bit touchy, but if we kind of go down to that bottom trough, you can see that we're getting an SWR of 1.48 or 1.45 or so at 3.81 megahertz. Now if I continue along, we can see that we have another dip in SWR at roughly 7.185 megahertz. We've got 1.14 and so on and so forth. We can keep moving the marker along the curve and we can see where the SWR is best and where it's worst. So now let's zoom in and actually take a closer look at the frequency span between six megahertz and nine megahertz so we can get a better idea of what this antenna is doing in the 40 meter band. So in order to do that, I'm gonna change my start and stop frequencies. So I'll click start and then I'll punch in six megahertz. And then I'll change the stop frequency and I'll make that nine megahertz. So now that we've zoomed in, you can see we're sweeping between six and nine megahertz. And it looks like our SWR low point is right about at 7.155 megahertz. So right in the 40 meter band. But we do have this weird little kind of spike and then kind of trough and then back up. I'm not really sure what's going on with the antenna there, but it's interesting to note that we have that artifact. So now at this point, what I can do is I can also turn on one of the other traces. So now with the Smith chart enabled, it looks a little bit messy, but we can also see the impedance measurement. So with marker number one at the SWR low point, and you can see the green marker number one on the Smith chart plot is right here in the center of the screen we are getting an impedance of 53.4 ohms with 15.5 nanofarads of capacitance at that SWR low point. So with the marker moved up to 6.93 megahertz, you can see the SWR is 2.8 or so. And now the impedance is 23.3 ohms with 597 nanohenries of inductance. Anytime the marker is above the horizontal point on the Smith chart, we're gonna see inductance. And then if we move this back so that the green marker is below the horizontal line, we're now gonna see capacitance in our impedance result. I'm not an expert with reading Smith charts or with antenna theory, but having the capacitive or inductive reactance included in our impedance measurement can help us make decisions about how to better tune the antenna. As you probably already know, you can do a lot more with a nano VNA than just check SWR. You can do things like check the length of an unknown piece of coax. You can check that coax for faults. You can check filters with this. You can check amplifiers with this. The list goes on and on. In the interest of keeping this video a reasonable length, I'm not gonna show any of the extended features here, but I will leave some links to videos I found that show those features down below. So check those out if you wanna learn more. You may already know that there are several different versions of Nano VNA on the market. Now we've been looking at the Nano VNA-F version two in this video, but I also own the Nano VNA-H that I bought from Rsync a couple of years ago. And between the two, I'd say that the Nano VNA-F is probably a little bit better suited for benchtop use. It's in a heavier metal case. It's gonna stay put on the desk. Whereas the Dash H, which is in a plastic case, kind of tends to slide around a little bit. Now, another thing you want to think about is that the Dash F version goes to a much higher frequency than the Dash H. I don't remember what this one tops out at, but I know it's much lower than the three gigahertz that the Dash F tops out at. So if you're doing microwave work, this is maybe the VNA that you want to consider. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that the Dash F has a little bit bigger and a little bit brighter screen than the Dash H. Now both units are roughly the same size, but this screen is just a little bit bigger and a little easier to read than this one. And I think it's a little bit brighter. Another thing to consider is that the Dash F has a 201 point maximum sweep, whereas the Dash H has 101 points. So in other words, you can get a little bit more precise with your measurements with the Dash F versus the Dash H. Some people are also gonna prefer the navigation buttons that are on the side of the Dash F over the rocker switch 
that's on the top of the NanoVNA-H. But the choice is really up to you. I'm going to leave some affiliate links for both of these units down in the video description so that you can check out the tech specs and make the decision that's right for your needs. So all that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and if you're a ham, 7-3.